This lesson will show how to graph y equals cotangent x over the closed interval from negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees. To better understand the graph of the cotangent function, we need to remember that cotangent x is equal to one divided by tangent x. And since division by zero is undefined, where the tangent function is equal to zero, the cotangent function is undefined, and the graph of the cotangent function will have a vertical asymptote. It's also true where the graph of the tangent function has a vertical asymptote, the cotangent function is equal to zero. In addition, where the tangent function is equal to one, so is the cotangent function, and where the tangent function is equal to negative one, so is the cotangent function. Let's take a look at the graph of the cotangent function using desmos.com. Actually, before we graph the function, let's check the settings by clicking the wrench in the upper right-hand corner. Notice how the calculator is in degree mode the interval for the x-axis is from negative 400 degrees to positive 400 degrees with a step of 45 degrees, and I left the y-axis at the default settings with a step of one. So let's go ahead and graph the cotangent function. Now that we see the graph of the cotangent function, let's relate it to the graph of the tangent function. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the cotangent function off and turn the tangent function on and as we said earlier, where the tangent function is equal to zero, the cotangent function is undefined, and therefore the graph of the cotangent function will have a vertical asymptote at these five points. Let's go ahead and sketch vertical lines through these five points. Next, where the tangent function has a vertical asymptote, the cotangent function is equal to zero. So let's plot points on the x-axis at x equals negative 270, negative 90, 90, and 270 degrees. Again, where the graph of the tangent function has a vertical asymptote, the cotangent function value is zero, which means the graph of the cotangent function must pass through these four points. And now let's find some points on the graph of the tangent function where the tangent function value is one or negative one, and since the cotangent function values will be the same, the points that we find will be on the graphs of both functions. We know tangent 45 degrees is equal to one, which gives us this point on the graph of the tangent function. We also know tangent of negative 45 degrees is equal to negative one, which gives us this point on the graph of the tangent function. Similarly, the tangent of 135 degrees is equal to negative one, which gives us this point on the graph of the tangent function and the tangent of negative 135 degrees is equal to positive one, which gives us this point on the graph of the tangent function. And wherever the tangent function is equal to one, so is the cotangent function, and wherever the tangent function is equal to negative one, so is the cotangent function, and therefore these points must also be on the graph of the cotangent function. So using all of this information, we can now make a nice graph of the cotangent function by hand if we needed to. Let's go ahead and turn the tangent function off and regraph the cotangent function. Notice how it does pass through the points that we found, and each piece does approach the vertical asymptotes. One more connection we might want to make is looking at each piece of the cotangent function. Notice how from left to right, each piece decreases. And if we look at each piece of the graph of the tangent function, notice how each piece increases from left to right. I hope you found this helpful.